In news from Jamaica, Andrew Holness stands undefeated. Mr. Holness has survived yet another internal attack to oust him as, as leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, JLP. On Monday, Mr. Holness easily won a secret ballot which decided his fate as JLP leader. Twenty of the JLP's 21 members of parliament gathered at the party's Belmont Road headquarters in Kingston to cast their ballots except Deputy Leader J.C. Hutchinson. Mr. Hutchinson was absent due to ill health. However, he sent his ballot in a letter. CNews understands that at least two-thirds of the caucus voted for Holness. Thirteen of the MPs supported him remaining as their leader, while seven opposed. It's reported that the seven who opposed include those who had supported Audley Shaw over Mr. Holness for leader in the November 2013 contentious leadership battle. Our sources say James Robertson, Audley Shaw, Marissa dalrymple Philbert, Delroy Chuck, Gregory Mayer and Darrell Vaz all voted against Holness remaining as party leader. Veteran JLP member and MP for Northwest St. Andrew Derek Smith chaired Monday's meeting. He explains that members were not pleased with Holness's handling of the Senate saga. Mr. Holness booted Dr. Tufta, Christopher Tufton and Arthur Williams from the Senate in 2013. However, both the Constitutional Court and the Appellate Court agree that Mr. Holness's actions were unconstitutional and unlawful. As a result of the um, appeal court um, turning down the, the request, they, we thought it prudent to have a meeting with all the MPs just for a look at the result and how it will impact on not just the party but uh, Mr. Wallace's uh, leadership. So we met um, yesterday morning, some 20 of 21, Mr. Hutchison unfortunately was unavoidably absent. And after uh, a few hours of general discussion, we agreed to um, have a poll um, in regards to the continuance of Mr. Wallace as leader of the opposition. That was done, and um, he came out. He got the majority votes, and he, he came out on top. So he's uh, assured of a, a very comfortable um, difference um, between who supported from who did not. Mr. Smith would not comment on the seven MPs who purportedly opted against wholeness, but he hopes Monday's meeting will silence the bickering that has been plaguing the party's image. I would hope so. One can't be entirely sure, but I would hope so, and I am hopeful based on the mood of the meeting and, and the general comments within the ranks, I, there will be, I suspect, some continuance, but surely not at the level that it has been going on for the last uh, 16, 16 months. Meanwhile, the Jamaica Labour Party leader used the weekend to appeal for unity within his party. Mr. Holness contends that a divided JLP will not be able to regain the reins of power from the ruling PNP administration. He says members should remain true to the ethos of the party instead of their own personal ambitions. We have more from Tanika Thomas. Laborites out in their numbers having a good time on Sunday. Party officials and stalwarts also enjoying a gospel concert put on by Member of Parliament for South West St. Catherine, Everell Warmington. But behind these jubilant faces is a party desperately trying to stay united, especially since local government elections are expected to be called by mid-year. Party leader Andrew Holness's credibility has been under the microscope recently following his questionable attempts to boot Dr. Christopher Tufton and Arthur Williams from the Senate. Both the Constitutional Court and the Appellate Court agree that Mr. Holness's actions were unconstitutional and unlawful. Since then, some have been calling for him to resign, among them a veteran JLP Member of Parliament and a former Shadow Minister on Justice, Delroy Chuck. But Mr. Holness has shown no sign that he plans to give in to those demands. On Sunday, he preached party unity using scriptures from the Bible. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. 
and every city and house divided against itself shall not stand. The Labour Party cannot be a divided house. There is too much at stake. And everyone, including myself, must put away our personal pride and feelings and ambition. Another of Mr. Holness' supporters, a member of Parliament for Central Clarendon, Mike Henry, also appealed for harmony within the GLP. No one Labour Party person can lead us to victory. There is none among us that can lead us without the unity of purpose. But I'm here tonight to say to Andrew Holness, I'm here to say to him and the Jamaica Labour Party, Whatever issues we have to address, I have great faith in your ability and the ability of everyone on the As we work our way through the problems, as we work our way to deal with the issues, I am saying to every labor right, whether you're at the bottom rung, the middle rung, or the top rung, we need every labor right to come together in the interest of the Jamaica Labour Party. Meanwhile, Mr. Holness insists members should put aside their personal ambitions. Arguing that Jamaicans are desirable of change, he charged that the PMP administration has failed to improve the economy and the standard of living. He stressed that it will take a cohesive GLP to defeat the PNP. The people of Jamaica is crying out for leadership. Crying out for hope. They want something to believe in again. And as I stand here with you today, I feel with every vein in my body that the time for Jamaica and Jamaicans to step up and move Jamaica forward is now. The JLP leader urged labor rights to project one mission. Come together as different members with different functions, joining in one body to serve you. To serve you. And there is one mission that we all have on this platform. One mission. And that mission is to move Jamaica from poverty to prosperity. Tanika Thomas reporting for Scene Caribbean News. And speaking on Sunday at the Gospel Concert in St. Catherine, Mr. Holness says a JLP-led government would eradicate poverty in Jamaica. He says Jamaicans have encountered poverty for far too long. Bruce Golding said it, Eddie Siaga said it, and you may have remembered it this way. We are too rich as a country to be poor. We don't all have to be rich, but nobody has to be poor. And the mission restated by me is that I'm not talking a hundred years from now. I'm not talking an ex. 40 years from now, I am saying that we start the mission of ending poverty in this country right now. What we need is leadership that is determined to do the things necessary to build and grow this country. And I stand here and make a commitment to you that I don't want leadership for myself. I don't want leadership to put on resume. My life's duty, my task, my challenge, my obligation to you is to make Jamaica a better place for you and your children. And two of the JLP's newest candidates for the upcoming general elections were formally introduced at the Gospel Concert on Sunday. Faithful Williams will represent St. Andrew Easton. Meanwhile, retired cop Newton Amos will run on the JLP's ticket for Northwest St. Catherine. I want to point out Miss Favon Williams. A new addition to our team. I want to 
point out, you know, he was in charge of the Hunts Bay Police Station when I was a kid. Listen. This man is a formidable candidate, senior superintendent formerly, and now a candidate for the Jamaica Labour Party. And I give you my word, he will win that seat.